McCoy on his own. He gets the try. The Red 78. We're both monster people. Gets over the line. Try for monster. Nobody knows monster rugby better. Hello and welcome along. I'm Alan Quinlan and you're listening to episode 72 of the Red 78 here on the Rugby Channel. And with me, of course, is my partner in crime, Neve Briggs. How are you, Neve? Good, Quinny. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Our Champions League dream is over. Anyway, Liverpool uh, drawn with Villa on Saturday. So, and of course, don't even talk to me about Spurs losing at home. Spurs, Spurs lost again. Anyway, you're in a dreadful run. Yeah. But um, dreadful. Anyway, it was the, a bad weekend for Leinster rugby and for Irish rugby. You would think um, lots of people kind of jumping on the the uh, the narrative that this is uh, this is going to be damaging for Ireland going forward, given the World Cup is in a few months. And um, unfortunately, for from a Leinster point of view, from an Irish point of view, they lost um, against a you know a La Rochelle side that obviously they're full of quality. Uh, we're not going to go in depth in the match, but it's worth kind of mentioning about the the levels that required uh, to actually get the job done. Leinster were so dominant throughout the pool stages and the knockout stages up to this point, and probably the way they started the game was just sensational. Uh, second half, so on Leinster like and their exit strategies, and the, they made some mistakes. And you know, it wasn't all down to Leinster's mistakes. La Rochelle were outstanding, and it's just a little reminder of of um, you know when we talk about Munster of the the, the gap and the level that that match on Saturday was just phenomenal. The intensity, the pace, the power in the game, the skill execution, all that kind of stuff. Um, We've our own final to worry about this week against the Stormers and the URC. But you know, just quickly, what did you what did you make of that game? And do you, do you think it's damaging for Ireland going forward, given the lion's share of that Leinster side will will be lining out for Ireland in the World Cup? Yeah, look, I I echo what you're saying. I thought it was an absolutely incredible game. I thought the pace, um, the ferocity, the the contact zone was. It was as good as nearly any international game I've seen this year. I thought it was um it was it was brilliant. I thought Leinster's start was outrageous and it's funny, I I did comment during the match when they went to twenty fourteen and then they went twenty three and twenty six. Um, you know, three penalties in a row and I know they were in front of the posts, but I kind of felt like that that's that's kinda of when they stopped being brave. They went back into their shell a little bit because um, any other game all year, we very rarely see them take three points. Um, and and I know it's cup rugby, and you've got to keep the scoreboard ticking. But you also have to know, like Munster against Leinster the previous week, that sometimes you know that you're going to have to score more tries because of the quality of the opposition. Um, and there was a couple I thought that Leinster could have went to the line to, um, and um, and I thought that they just. They kind of went back into their shell a little bit, and um, a side like Irish shells, they sent that blood, and and they went after them. And and to be fair, right, Leinster's defence was unbelievable for huge portions of that. Like they took some pounding because in the second half, La Rochelle had so much possession, so much territory. Um, it was it was it kind of felt like it was coming, but also there was a part of you as the time was ticking on, you were thinking, oh my god, could they actually hold out here? Um. Uh, but yeah, look huge. I think James Ryan was a colossal loss. But Henshaw getting injured um, was tough, and um, and really, really smart play by La Rochelle. It was just unfortunate, and um, I've no doubt. You know, Andy Farrell is probably thinking, um, you know, it'll battle hard in lots of them for sure, and uh, and they'll definitely learn a lot from it. But also. And an Irish team and a Leinster team bouncing into Irish camp in three or four weeks' time versus one that's kind of now not that um, will definitely be a concern for him, I think. And he's definitely going to have to either address it or come up with some sort of stra- strategy where going into Irish camp is not the same as Leinster camp or something like that, where players are are um, not really thinking about that. So you it's a bit of a conundrum about, uh... because... You talk about being brave, I think, and we spoke about this the week before, Munster not taking their penalties. Leinster had a penalty at the end of the game, and look, again, um, it was a long way out. It wasn't an easy kick. I was surprised. Oh, Ross I Bourne think that was, that kick. would have been, I was no, also I, I think surprised that would have been right that, on the edge. That would have been right on the edge, Quinny. That would have been right on the edge of his of his radar. He He's an outrageously good kicker. 
Um, but he's not a lengthy kicker. He's not a Ben Healy lengthy kicker. Um, it was just in, yeah no I think that would have been that would have been on the outer range um, but yeah that's just my opinion yeah well look I, I would have went for the kick and I also would have tried to get a drop goal but look the way the game panned out um, uh, we certainly don't don't um, yeah I certainly agree with you that it's it, it is it's a game that I'm just surprised Leinster and it's un-Leinster like when they when they review it there was three Munster guys involved in the La Rochelle squad, um, not not players, uh, Ronan O'Gara, Donica Ryan and Sean Dougal, who played for Munster. So um, you know, we, 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 we probably have to mention them because what Ronan O'Gara has done and, and Donica Ryan, his time there as well is just, is just phenomenal. But look, it was disappointing and not good for Irish rugby, that result. A lot of people are asking me how, who, how I, who, was... I was, who was who was I going for and um, I wanted Leinster to win that game. I, I genuinely did. Um, I'm obviously very close to Rog, but I wanted Leinster to win that game for, for, for the good of the Irish team going forward. But it is what it is. It's done. I, and I was Shelley... the same to you. I was the same as, as you, to be fair. It did really. I wanted that because I felt like um, had they won that, then the, the mood or the pitcher changes for them going into that Irish camp. But I have yeah. to say, Ron O'Hara is... He's, he was exceptionally he's exceptionally good to to listen to, isn't he? Obviously, we listen to him off the ball at the weekends or on Fridays or whatever, but his post-match interviews um, were brilliant in terms of... Um, he's very honest, isn't he? He just completely... It's, it's, it's just so different from the norm where you're, you're almost media trained, I'd say. The PR person of La Rochelle probably kind of hides behind their fingers at times when he goes into the interview because he's liable. He he's he is just so so honest. It's very easy to see why they play for him. Um and um yeah, look, speaking about family and his mom obviously been there after last year, and I just think that um it was brilliant. I was I was delighted for him too. To be fair, yeah, of course. Um, I think. It's probably important to say, you know, Leinster have had a bad two weeks, but they're an incredible side and it's an incredible squad. And I think they will bounce back from this. And uh, that's the cruelty of sports sometimes. Munster have their own final on Saturday, unexpected final, yeah. we've got to say. And you probably have some uh, a bit of an online presence this week of Leinster people saying we want Munster to win. Some will say they want them to lose. And, and I was asked that so many times last week. There was certainly a few red jerseys in the crowd the other day and a few different jerseys, but it was a disappointing day for, for, for Leinster. And I think, look, they were the best team consistently throughout the competition and they saved probably their worst 40 minutes for that second half. Even though La Rochelle are a brilliant side, I'm not taking anything away from them. I think Leinster just didn't manage that second half. Moving on to the final, um, I put a tweet out yesterday to get um, the support, Munster supporters take on obviously being in a final, an unexpected final, given the start of the season that Munster had. Um, you could never have envisaged this after losing five games from the first seven. Uh, various different reasons why they started slowly. And I think uh, the last few weeks, they've just been obviously phenomenal. I think, you know, the, going back to that Stormers win, the Sharks draw, the win in Leinster, the win in Glasgow and the win away in in. In Leinster, so the, if they win this game at the weekend, which is incredibly difficult, it's going to be, you know, an unbelievable situation because you would have been away in your previous five, you know, the previous four games. This is the fifth game they're away from home. So we'll wait and see what's the supporters' view and and what were they thinking ahead of this game. Yeah, look, lots of hope. Uh, Ellie Stone, we first started out this year as our build year, getting used to new people and patterns. I think it's already a mighty achievement to reach this final as a result. We have great determination, but are also not afraid to take risks. It'll be close, but I have huge hope. Richard Daly, hoping that the last number of weeks and away games will stand to us, but it's a final, so I expect both teams to come out fighting, but reckon we have more fight in the game. Granny Babs thinks it's a, a course we can. That's basically it. She didn't say anything else. Why can't we? Uh, John Dewey, we poked a bear a few weeks. That will make it a very difficult to repeat. Hopefully a clean bill of health injury-wise. We need our big saffas if we were to stand a chance. Should be a cracking atmosphere. An end to a season of serious de development 
for players and coaches. Uh, John Loftus, if we win next week, in reality, it's a big if, then the achievement will rank amongst our very best, especially given the unbeaten away run to secure it. How we started the season and that we've had to play the same second row for virtually most of it, and stand up and fight. Um, Brian Hegarty, if Munster win, which they are well capable of doing, it will be some achievement considering the yo-yo season we've had. Um, do you think that for this game, that while we've had a tough start, when you take away the first five games after that, Munster have had an incredibly good season, like realistically. When you talk about from that November international against the South African A's down in Porky Cueve, Bar one or two skewed results in the URC I'm talking about now. I know we'll be just they'll always be disappointed about the Sharks winning the Champions Cup, but like they've actually been the one of the most consistent teams since then. Yeah, they they've shown dramatic improvement from the start of the season. Um scored a lot of tries, played a different brand of rugby than we, we, what we've been used to. Um defensively, um very, very strong, bar that period of Scarlet, Glasgow, and 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 Sharks uh, back in March, end of April. So um, yeah, there's been a real. Um, I think the worry was after the Glasgow game that that's it, the season is done. Heading to Glas- uh, South Africa, and I've probably repeated myself here a few times. And it was a bit of doom and gloom there. And in fairness, they showed incredible character to go and 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 fight out those results in South Africa. And then dug it out in Glasgow as well, which was, that was incredibly tough for them. And Glasgow hadn't lost there, I think, in a year and a half at home. And, you know, the Stormers hadn't lost in 21 games. So um, they've really dug in there. I think they've showed quality along the way. And the improvement has been dramatic. I think even if you look at the Champions Cup, the performance, performances away in Northampton, away in Toulouse, they lost the game in Toulouse, but they gave them a serious scare. So um, there's still a feeling of uh, the Sharks game in the Champions Cup, I think, was a bit of an eye opener. If you're not physically right and you get dominated and you allow the opposition who are very powerful and big into your 22 and maul. Um, but yeah, you, you, there's lots of players. There's a number of players here about to play nearly every game all season. And uh, the the injury list looks a bit healthier. We'll We'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but a dramatic improvement, and I think they've enthused the Munster fans. 100%. Um, Joe says, in a word, yes, massive challenge in what will be a packed DHL stadium. Heat won't be an issue next weekend. Tough team selection, given so many players on form, so stacked bench too, which is something we'll chat about in a, in a few minutes. Uh, Brian Lawler, manic aggression, Quinny, manic aggression, of course we can do it. Discipline, frustrate them, draw out that rage and let the boots of Healy and Crowley sail us home. We need Snyman big time and have to be up fast on their back three. Um, clean it close, I think we'll do it. It'll be a bruiser, but the team has a huge sense of belief, belief now given our run of away successes. They will leave everything on that and in brackets, uh, rubbish pitch, which we know there's issues around there, the ground and, and the grass. Um James Gillespie, the Stormers are excellent on the attack, but very, very loose. If Munster can maintain parity with the Stormers forwards, there will be many chances to score. Um, Victor Ford, in the same way La Rochelle went about against the odds and turned over the favourites, Munster can do the same. We will have to be accurate in attack and no easy outs with penalties. Our phase play in attack in the semi gives rise to believe we can deliver when it counts. Uh, Copper, Cooper Lynch, sorry if their defence is as good as it was against Leinster and they don't let the Stormers attack then they can absolutely do it need to be more clinical close to the line though and take every chance, it'll be one in the forwards interesting um, Kenneth O'Connor no doubt Stormers are going to wait to be up for it and we have to be and have to be strong favourites that said we finally look, our, look like our own team again the long South African hangover is wearing off be huge if this team for this team if we can manage to win it. Um, that's a very interesting one in relation to the identity that we're now talking about Munster and lots of those couple of tweeters talking about Munster of old in terms of, of of having that fight that mentality being up for it physically uh, getting to pitch of those um, high intensity games really quickly. Um, 
and things will evolve and culture will 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 layer but um been back months are looking like our own team again is um it's very interesting I thought I thought that was a, a like there was because there was a couple of tweets about that yeah of course I think um They've uh, and when I say the word enthuse people, I think they've they've captured the the imagination a little bit again. Um, I'd still be cautious in in where we're at, and mm. um, because even though the results have been very good this in the last few weeks, um, we still have a way to go. We're still we still need more quality, more depth, uh, more impact off the bench. If you get a number of injuries and. To close that gap on 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 um, incredible Leinster squad, I think um, you need more players coming through. So, um, but people are happy this year. You know, nobody expected Munster to be in a final. Nobody expected them to win a trophy, and they may not. Um, but I think they've seen enough to they've seen enough of the fight and uh, ambition to try and play. And I think that's that's probably the the biggest pleasing thing is the improvements in the attack. Um, all over um, the skill set of, of even the forwards their lines are running all that kind of stuff and you know Leinster are the reference point because their accuracy around their forwards their handling lines are running all that stuff so there's still still a way to go yeah. and um, you know if Munster weren't were, were not to do well on Saturday it could you know you'd be finishing on it'd be very unsa- unfair to say a low. Um, it'd be still a very, very positive season from where they're at. They're in Champions Cup next year. They're going to be seeded in the top seed for Europe. Um, so they're, that's a great, um, you know, they're great points to, to have out of it. But, um, okay, so a lot of people are enthusiastic, which you would expect. Um, there's nobody saying that we're going to get uh, walloped out of it here. Um Cautiously, I, I I always have that approach, and I'm you know it's the players still in me, afraid to kind of get excited and think, oh yeah, Munster are going to go and win here. This is going to be incredibly difficult. So what I would ask you, you know, we normally do the positives and negatives of the performance. We don't have a performance this week. We obviously you know had loads of positives last week from from that Leinster game, uh, and not getting away from the fact they were missing a lot of players, but it was a. Uh, I think Munster stayed at it for the 80 minutes and that shows particularly in the last kind of uh, the build up to the drop goal, the way they, there's a lot of self-confidence and self-belief. So um, I think they're a team now that even if they go behind, they'll still keep going and they have answers. You know, last year and the year before when Munster were chasing games, it was incredibly difficult. Now there's a feeling that um, they can still go and score. So um what do Munster have to get right this week? Okay, so we go back a number of weeks ago to that Stormers game. They scored four tries, um, started the game really well. The scrum was under pressure, um, but it was a brilliant performance and a brilliant win. And in the end, I know Ruin Nell scored the try late on for 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 the Stormers to to bring them back closer in the eighty first minute. Um, that was Munster deserved to win that game. So what do Munster need to get right this week? Given we think the Stormers will be a lot better, um, they'll be kind of reeling from Munster beating them and, and taking their home record this season. What do Munster have to do well this 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 weekend? Yeah, look, it's interesting. I think from a, a forward point of view, I think the scrum is going to be integral this weekend. I think it's going to be really, really important because... Um, you know, you're looking at the likes of Kitsoff and Dueva and these guys and they're absolute monsters. And uh, we've been singing Stephen Archer's praise for a huge number of weeks now. He's been incredible, but it can't just be him by himself. So we need to have um, the likes of Jeremy Lockman and uh, Jimmy Barron and Niall Scandal or whoever's going in there at Hooker and, and Dave Kilcoyne. It'll be really interesting to see if he's back in the mix because that could be huge for us in terms of that strength and depth. So... I think the selection will will tell a huge amount. I think in terms of the forwards and and the combinations that they go with. Um, so that's number one. I think we can't kick loosely. I think Connacht fell into that trap last week uh, or two weeks ago, sorry, and allowed that South African back three. That's when you when you when you say kick loosely, is that kick poorly or is it poor, no kick chase or or what is it? Yeah, there's different cogs to it. So you, if you're gonna, you definitely want to. If you're gonna 
if you're going to look to say, say your strategy is that they're covering both tram lines and you want to kick right long down the middle, you've got to find grass and you've got to make them work to it in order for your, your defensive wall to be set quicker. So for example, if you kick long straight down the middle, you're almost taking the pedal off the gas to allow them to kind of run back a small bit so that you definitely have everybody linked together. What you don't want to happen is kick down the middle, but kick short so they're coming onto it and therefore we have no time to get our red wall set, if that makes any sense. So that's really important. Um, if or is, is, plays, is, the key, is the key is the key to that kicking game having as many monster players on their feet. So if you have six monster guys in the bottom of a rock and you kick long, you're down a number of bodies. And is also is it a case of uh, you make a really interesting point as and you're obviously the coach, not me. That is it a case of closing that space as quick as you can, so they don't, they can charge back and step people. Um, yeah. So it, there's a couple of things for me in terms of if you kick long and and you can you can send one after it, which you've always spoke about, and everybody else connected, you don't actually have to have a huge huge amount of line speed because as long as you're connected, if they step back in, they're stepping back into a body to be hit. The issue is that if one person starts sprinting and then somebody else sprints with them and so do you before we're getting up off the ground or somebody's just not quite quick enough, you're creating a huge amount of dog legs and the likes of Livok and Yankees and Willem said they'll find all that space. So um, they're going to have to be really, really careful in relation to that kick game. I think that's really important. Um, and then also be patient on the ball. I think I think Stormers have been quite porous in defence at times when you go through multi-phase because they're, they're big and they're powerful, but they don't have a huge amount of fitness. That's definitely something that Munster have. And we've seen that hugely over the last few weeks. So if you can be patient in multi-phase and understand that if you don't get over the gain line in first phase or the second, that there has to, you can find another way by doing that, whether it's going back down the short side or whether it's committing defenders to be able to come, you know, to be able to get to that edge very quickly then you're, you're moving them at times when they don't want to be moved. The biggest thing Munster can do or can like need to avoid is going on these one-out runners and running into big bodies that have literally tackled just getting back up off the ground and not having to move. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. But there's, there's there, while the Stormers have lots of strengths and you know, we'll speak about them, definitely have weaknesses too that Munster can get after and is that a case of multi-phase? And Connacht probably showed that a few times. And the other question I would ask is, do Munster need to go to the edges a bit and be be kind of brave um, with their attack? Because I think I, I kind of noticed in that Stormers game, they were holding three, sometimes four in that backfield. And and then you have this incredible pace coming back with, you know, Willems, uh, uh Sanatla was didn't play that game, but he's incredibly powerful. He's out. Uh, he's been in a, uh, quite a serious car accident. So yeah, he won't be playing. Lelan Zass is it was the other winger. Angelo Davids, they're they're powerful and they're quick. And, they're and very very quick. And of course, Manny Libok, uh, he hovers in that backfield as well. And if you give him time and space, he's a brilliant runner. Um, so that 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 certainly is something they need to do. Um, but I think Munster focusing on themselves and trying to bring that attack and ask those questions of, of, of trying to get into multi-phase. Obviously, they've got to try and get their set piece right, I think. Um, the scrum, you know, there's no doubt about it. They're trying to go, going to try and go after Munster and that scrum again. And um, it's it's a case of, you know, Munster did well out the field, but just before halftime, I don't know if you remember, there was awful pressure coming on that scrum and they ended up scoring off the back of not yeah. not the scrum driving them over, but Ru and Nell scored. There was a number of penalties. Um, how how will they cope with that? Is it just get a better technique, be tighter? Um, Look, you're the scrum expert, St- not St- me. St- but... Stephen Kitsoff, uh, Joseph Dweba, and and Franz Malherbe are incredibly powerful. Um, yeah, look, it's hard. It's hard. You're up against the, the 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 size and the power of them. I think it is a case of of getting in a really good body position, getting set early, um, and and making sure that the eight monster forwards are are being really really strong, and they put pressure and try and turn the turn the screw back again. It's it's going to be a tough one for them. There's there's no doubt about that. What what kind of strengths do do the Stormers bring? Is it that open field running? Is it that X factor of of those big ball carriers like 
Evan Roos, uh, he's a brilliant number eight. Um, Billy Engelbrecht, uh, Diamani. 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 He's, he's a brilliant so, runner as well. Diamani, one, yeah. one of their strengths is their back row and their ability to fill for ball. So between Diamani and Evan Roos, they're really, really good jacklers. Really, really good. So therefore, we spoke. We speak a lot about the breakdown in terms of Munster's ability to create quick ball, but also to take out threats. Munster have to make sure that once the ball carrier goes into contact, the two supporting players don't get disconnected from them. So that with that clear out or the the ability to remove those threats is as instant as almost the tackle is happening. So as the tackle is going to ground, then those threats are are already cleared. The biggest thing is, can happen sometimes at Munster is that they can. And it's you see it happening a lot now. Leinster are really, really smart at doing it, where the the outside player that you're looking to kind of almost get rid of um comes around through the channel, like comes past the scrum half. So Guy Ro- Ringrose is really, really good at it. So it kind of stops that momentum a little bit and gives an opportunity for the inside to get a poach. Um and that's gonna be really key for Munster this weekend. They're gonna to have to absolutely target that back row that if I, it, and I remember Joe Schmidt saying to me um, a long time ago, um, earlier we were playing Australia, and that the only really, um, the only real kind of a detail it's spoken about in relation to the breakdown was just taking Michael Hooper away from the ball every time anybody got away, anytime he was nearest. So anytime he was coming even in close, someone just was there to take him away. That's going to be really critical for Munster this weekend. So they're going to have to be really smart in how they, the ball carrier has to work incredibly hard, 100%. But those those clearing players will have to be as instant as the tackle in order for Munster to be able to generate quick ball. I think that's going to be big. Yeah, it is. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The breakdown and those physical collisions. Evan Roos, uh, Diamani, and Engelbrecht. It looks like that'll probably be but their back row. Um, they're they're an incredibly powerful side when you start naming them. Ben Jason Dixon was in the second row. Marvin Ori will come back in there, so he, he, Dixon could go to the back row. Um, and the best poacher um, in in world rugby is 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 injured from at the moment. Um, mm. He may be back. Um, I think he's back. I heard he's back. I heard he'll be on the bench. Yeah, he could. He could well be. Um, from a monster point of view, selection. Um, and Peter O'Mahony was the star of the week the last time. He he was big, isn't he? Wasn't he? He was physical, um, showed a lot of brilliant leadership. Gavin Coombs um, had a big game, scored a try late on. Um, and just to rehash that game, Munster started brilliantly. Um, unfortunately, RG Snyman went off. He got a, a HIA in that game. He got another one in Glasgow. Um, so everybody will be hoping that he's back in the mix. Um what kind of a monster team do you do you think should be selected? So we have the conundrum now of, uh, so we hear it's not confirmed yet that Conor Murray, Calvin Nash, Malachi Fekitoa, and R.G. Snyman um, all, all are available this again. On their, all confirmed yeah, this morning. The, the thirty-man squad that uh, travelled out is confirmed, and they're all in. So I think R.G. and Ben Healy still have to complete uh, their full return to play, but the others are are good to go. Um, and that's huge. And it's funny, we've we're, we're now getting to a stage where there's going to be players not involved in this 23 this weekend where we're going to be like, how are they not involved? Do you know what I mean? Like that back row combination, do you start, if Orgy comes through everything, do you start him and John Klein and where do you put Ty Fern and do you start Ty Fern? So like, where do you put Finneen Witchley, who's been absolutely outstanding since he's come back from his injury and looks incredibly powerful and really disciplined and it's been really physical for Munster. So then you have that, that back row, you know, kendellen has been brilliant, John hodden has been brilliant, Jack who was excellent from the Leinster game. So like, it's, it's tough. There's a, there's, there's a lot of selection where There's going to be you know some, I mean? some, some, some very disappointed players here. It's a good position for for Graham Roundtree to have. Let's just start with the back line. So um, we'll try and name a team. Um, most people could probably pick the same team that we'll pick. Um, so Mike Haley at fullback, that's probably a given. Uh, yeah. It is a given, I think. Um, Shane Daly on one wing. Does Calvin Nash come back in for Keith Earls? See, that, that, that's, 
he, like Calvin Ash is having the season of his life. Do you reward him or do you go to experience? Keith Harris was incredible in that Leinster game. His defensive reads were brilliant. Um, I so think putting Calvin Nash back in the team um, is is something that will happen, probably should happen. Yeah, it probably Erzy should. Probably, er, Erzy coming off the bench because he can cover a number of positions and gives that versatility mm. there. Of course, you can put Calvin Nash on the bench and 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 bring bring you know move Erzy around somewhere else if he gets injured. Keith Earls. Okay, that's uh, the centre. Malachi Fekato, does he come straight back into the team? Anton Frisch plays 13. It's funny, I actually loved the Ben Healy-Jack Crowley combination in 10-12 because if Ben Healy was stuck at the bottom of Morocco, got into clear, then, then you know, Jack Crowley is just there to move. Is, 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 Munster, is Munster's attack better with, uh, with Jack Crowley at 12 and Ben Healy at 10? There's an I argument so, to yeah. say that it could be, but... For me, well, do you I need think the physicality Malachi, of Mala? Do you need the physical, I, I think, physicality of him? I think you you do. Dan Duplessis is very powerful at twelve for for the Storm or so. I pick Malachi Fekatoa, um, Jack Crowley at ten, Connor Murray. I think he yeah. comes back in 100%. at nine the way he's yeah, played. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're happy enough to settle with that team. Yeah. Uh, forwards: Jeremy Lockman, Dermot Barn, the way he has played, and. Um, I think, obviously, Stephen Archer. Um, he's he's been incredible, really. Oh, he's been hanging on. He's been hanging on for the last few weeks and just kind of pieced together as having to play both those full games in South Africa. He's been brilliant, and that's the conundrum. Then, do you go? Um, is there is there a would there be an inclination to put Niall Scandal in? From a scrummaging point of view, in at hooker, possibly. Um, who knows? But Dermot Barn has been brilliant as well, and it is great to have Scandal back. So, do you bring RG Snyman straight back into the team with John Klein? I think, I think a lot depends on what you're going from a back row point of view. So, if you're going to have, I, I'd imagine. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do you think Munster will go to six-two split again? I think they will. So, they, so therefore, it's Craig Casey and either Ben Healy or Keith Earls, which is mad to think that either of them are, are, could lose out. And so you're going to go with Kendellan and Hodnett or Hodnett and Jack McDonoghue, and therefore you start O'Mahony at seven, Ty Byrne at six, or G uh, and second row and uh, Gavin at eight. But here's the thing, like, or G's, like, why he's a monster, like, are, is there too much of an expectation on him to to be able to physically impose himself on this game when he's had a really start start return, which we knew would happen, by the way, because when you're out for such a long time, you just come back with these niggles. Okay, I know the concussions were are a different story, but is there a worry there that if you start him, you know, he there's might no not... Worry for, there's no worry for me. He's the, one of the biggest second rows in the world. And he's one of the best rugby players in the world. You, you don't die wondering. He goes straight back in with John no, I, Klein. I, 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 yeah, Ty, I just... Ty Borden goes into the back row with Peter O'Mahony and Gavin, and Gavin. And Gavin Booms. And you take on that physicality and you try and get the same pack that started in Glasgow that was badly disrupted um, early on in that game. You're losing O'Mahony and Snyman. So I think that's the pack I'd go for. Incredibly difficult and hard on John Hodnett, who, to, Hodnett, who I think has been brilliant the last few weeks. Um, obviously then you're looking at a bench of either um, if you go to 6-2 split Finney and Witcherly Jack who John Hodnett or Alex Kendellan someone's losing it out there you know and that's mm. that's the difficult part but it's a good place to be for for um, for, uh, for Graham Rountree and the Munster team and again you know there's a risk there's always a risk going with a 6-2 split because you That little bit of pressure. If um, if they go to six two split, do you think it's do you think it's Ben Healy or Keith Earl that sits on the bench? It has to be Ben Healy because I think um, he's shown that he's come on in the last number of weeks and he's changed games and he's kicking game and he's attack and he's pretty brave going to the game line and 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 that was the case for both those games in South Africa. So what's the, the case Stormers, then for a six two? Why would you go six two then? A, a, a bar, okay. Uh, the obvious reason of the storm has been a very, very strong and powerful pack. Like they're 
is there a reason to revert back to the five three then? Because everybody now is back fit. Um, it, it's yeah, that that's there's an argument for both. I think it probably I'm not I, I don't know this for sure, but if you ask the backs coach, Mike Prendergast, um, he probably won a five three scenario, and that's yeah. probably uh, Andy Kiriakou, he probably won six forwards on the bench. So who knows? Um Sometimes it can work very well in your favour and other times it can backfire. It backfired on Toulouse a number of weeks ago um, when 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 they had an injury and DuPont had to go to, to, to 10. It kind of disrupted their whole attack. So who knows? Um, look, we, we, we can't keep going on about, about um, their strengths, I think, and weaknesses and monsters. And um, I think we've covered stuff there that Munster need to be very good at. Um, and this... It's the case right across the board. Any team that's playing, you need your scrum and line out and, and breakdown to be pretty good to have a chance of winning a game. And, and that'll be a focus for Munster last week and this week in preparing for this game. Um, for How the Stormers, exciting is they're, it? They're a very, 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 very powerful side who are very dangerous. And being on at home, it gives them an advantage. I think given the power they have and the quality they have, I think Munster have to be really strong defensively in those first up tackles. As we saw against Connacht, their wingers coming in off the wing, the damage they can do as well. So um, lots of threats right across the board. And I think they have more of an X factor. Um, and the idea here for Munster is to try and, as a collective, um, be better than the Stormers and, and maybe individualise it a little bit because they're 10 and Manny Libok, um he just has this ability to do special things, but he can also be vulnerable if you get at him and he can make mistakes. So it's very exciting. It's very exciting. It's a great place to be. There's going to be a lot of Munster fans traveling to South Africa and I'm, I'm sure you'll see lots of jerseys there. It's a 55,000 seater stadium with, and it's sold out. It's sold out really quickly. So it's going to be jam packed. The atmosphere is going to be um, very much against Munster. There's going to be far more South Africans there and Stormers fans than Munster fans. But I still think there'll be a sea a Reds that will, will give the team a lift. Um, just before we finish up, Neve, um, there was a video the video last week. I was going to ask you. I'm sure people yeah, have seen it. Has it has to. It has to. Has it any significance? Uh, basically, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's a video after when Jack Crowley gets a drop goal Final whistle goes in Dublin between Munster and Leinster. Stormers in the corporate box having food with their partners, wives, families. And they posted a video of them celebrating after Munster beat Leinster. So initially, yes, they're thinking, we have a home final now. Munster have to come and play us. But the one that it surprised me a little bit that that's, uh, number one, that somebody posted it. And number two, that's, Maybe some of the coaches were celebrating. It's not probably normal. Um, I don't think there's a big... It, it's going to have any major effect. I think jo, Joseph Dueba um, throwing his kids in the air, shouting, we're going to F them up. I think... They tried to mask over it then on the Monday. John Dobson did. And I thought that he should have just said, look, yeah, we got a bit excited. But I can understand and I do believe him that the excitement I of having the, home, having the home, home final as well and having the, you know, Leinster not having to travel to Dublin to play Leinster. So he went again last Friday and went on the radio, John Dobson, and started accusing Munster of cheap shots. And I thought, wow, this, this is, I'm not sure um, he missed the Marvin Ori situation with Peter O'Mahony and Joseph Dweber where there was a scuffle in the middle of the field. And Marvin Ori, the, the Stormers' second row, very, very put his hand down on, on Peter O'Mahony's face, first of all. Uh, and then when he was standing up, went at, went at his face again, which was very, it was stupid. It wasn't shown in replays. Um, again, that the control of that would have been South African TV directors. Um, but I don't know where the cheap shots were for Munster in the game. So he's after spicing it up a little bit, John Dobson. Very nice fellow. I met him a couple of times and obviously he's done a wonderful job with the Stormers. Does it have an effect? Will Munster have watched that? And will it it'll certainly add a little bit of tension to the game? Yeah, I'm quite sure they have. I think it's, it's a little bit distasteful, I think, in terms of whatever at the video and they're all getting excitement, excited. I think um, 
the, it, for me, it was more the radio comments afterwards. I just thought that was the most bizarre thing ever. Like there was absolutely no reason to bring that, that kind of, that up at all. I, I read about it and I was just like, it's a bit mad. But um, yeah, look, I, so the play, I, I'm sure the, the players amongst themselves are, you know, they, they, they'll be, I think the days are gone where you hang up newspaper articles in, um, in dressing rooms to motivate people. But there'll be something, <laughs> they, 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 there'll be something in the back of your mind where you'd be like, and I'd be showing that to the squad or lads, did you see this? And and you'd be like, well, there you go. You know what I mean? That, it, it, yeah, I don't think it was, it was, I, I'd say they were fuming at whoever sent it out because it was, um, it was beyond uh, not intelligent. I don't want to use the S word because uh, I thought it was, but I thought the, the comments on Friday were, were fairly bizarre. And I think Munster have been really good. They just, they haven't, they haven't said anything about it. They've just kept their powder dry. Um, yeah, it's not gonna. It's not gonna have a huge uh, difference in the game. I just thought that. Um, no, I think. But I think John, John, will, John will, will, will be very will be very good to to use what he needs to use. I think he's an incredibly he, astute leader. M- M- Munster, Munster have got to be careful here because it's going to be physical, and they've got to make sure that they front up and don't get bullied. There's a real danger here with a, a team like this. Um, that they could blow you away if you allow it. Um, from a physical point of view, so there's, you know, I'm 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 very cautious here. This there's an opportunity here, but Stormers are the favourites. Are probably have probably more quality and depth in their squad. They've more power, and you know, Munster are up against it. There's no doubt about that. Are they capable of winning it? Yes. Um, I think will they go for it? I've no doubt they will. I think they've got to stay in touch. This is the key to this game for me, Neve, that that Stormers don't pull away and start scoring tries and it doesn't go really, really loose like it did between Connacht and Stormers. Connacht kicked dreadfully in that game, shockingly, and they missed chances and opportunities. When they held on to possession, they asked some questions. So I'm sure Munster will have looked at that. I'm sure Stormers themselves will try and improve uh, and some of the stuff from that game, the tries that they conceded. But uh, it's a tough task, but it's a wonderful place to be. And um, fingers crossed, you know, they may. I think it was one of the tweeters at the start said it would have been up right up there with um, the best ever achievement for, for a Munster side. And I agree because no no one predicted this at the start of the season. And uh, they've done remarkably well. And even if they don't win it, I think it's been a really positive season. So uh, fingers crossed it would be special. And uh we're heading there. We can't afford to bring you out there because um, you cost too much to bring to South Africa. You'd be looking for first class, but uh, <laughs> fingers crossed. So that's it Enjoy. for episode uh, episode seventy two. Hopefully, we'll be back with a really positive uh, podcast next week to wrap up the season. And uh, you never know, maybe a trophy as well. So thanks again, Neve, and we look forward to chatting next week. Safe travels. The Red 78 with Alan Quinlan and Neil Briggs. Nobody knows Monster Rugby better. I'd like to think I know a lot.